Okay, um, I went ahead and start recording here. Um, you can hear me, right? I think I got my audio set up okay. So, okay, great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, you know, kind of as usual, I, I'd rather that these sessions be more driven by questions from people. Um, but, um, but I'm certainly willing to, you know, at least um, kind of go over where we're at uh, for anybody that's watching these kind of after the fact. So, so we should be working on, you should be working on the third unit. Um, I did get back the second test um, and I think I've got pretty much everything back um, anyway that, that was submitted on time at this point. So, um, and uh, yeah, as usual, you know, we've got a written problem set um, due um, by Tuesday and um, our programming assignment. So I'm, I'm assuming usually most people have questions about the programming assignment. Um, but kind of real quickly, the problem set um, has two questions, um, if I remember right. Or two multi-part questions, really. So well, the first one should hopefully should be rather should be the simpler of the two. Um, and I am just looking for uh, interleavings here, you know. So I'm you're just going to have a list, um, and I kind of give you the first one. So one possible interleaving is just all a program P or all a function P, if you want to think about this. So, so um, uh, you can think of it either way. Um, so, you know, we, 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 this, this week we're talking about concurrency. So, you know, there's lots of ways that things can be ex executing concurrently on, in our operating system. So you could have multiple threads and the threads are um, executing concurrently. So you could think of these as two, um, functions like P and Q that run in separate threads within a single process. Um, or, you know, um, you can also just think of these as, as just totally separate processes that are being managed by the operating system. So process P and process Q. Um, so anyway, um, uh, yeah, it could be that all of, you know, these three steps for function P execute, and then the operating system uh, regains control and starts executing um, the function Q, um, statements. So in that case, you would get kind of no interleaving, but just ABC followed by DE, right? But it could be that that uh, you have to think of these as atomic. So, so you can't interrupt, like do part of A and then switch over and do some work somewhere else, and then come back and finish up A, right? So once you start A, it's atomic. But you, you could um, execute A, but then the then get interrupted for whatever reason, and then the operating system decides to run Q, okay? Um, so anyway, the, the, I mean, it's kind of a big hint on this. It is not possible, for example, the, 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 the three statements for process P or thread P have to execute sequentially. So you certainly can't have C execute before B, right? That, that's one of the constraints. Um, and then the other, I mean, so our, our assignment, you're implementing um, the banker's algorithm. So we're getting kind of a double dose of this. So, so don't neglect um, the other things in our um, textbook, um, the, the chapter six um, uh, this week here. Right, so, so you know we're covering concurrency and um, also uh, deadlocks and starvation here, um, but um, uh, both the assignment and kind of the second problem are about deadlock avoidance, which is specifically the banker's algorithm. Uh, actually, there's there's two variations of deadlock avoidance. I talk a little bit about this in our um, video for the week. Um, there's this. Um, um, the, the process initiation denial, which just um, makes the decision when a new process is starting up, whether to allow the process to start or not, right? 
But then there's the resource allocation now where we make the decision for each request for a new resource of whether we're going to grant that resource or not. And so, uh, so for both of these, and, and we'll talk about this for the assignment, I think here um, when we get into it, but for both of these, um, for the, uh, the problem set and for the assignment three, um, we're basically focusing in on um, this idea of the description of a, the, the current state of the system. So the current state consists of the processes that are running, uh, the resources that we have that are available in the state, so the total number of resources for each process, um, but the maximum claim that each process says it needs for each resource, um, and the, um, the the current allocations. Okay, so so you know, um, and so on. And then for our assignment, we are basically going to be implementing Figure Six Point Nine C. This this um, function, uh, the, 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 the function to determine if some particular state is safe or not, right? So that, that's all the safe function does. Um, so, I mean, given this information, so given the current claims, the current allocations, the total number of resources, and then these two things can be um, derived. Um, so, so you really only need the, the claim, the allocation, and the total resources. So for example, um, uh, the available resource is um, so if we if we know that um, we currently have this number of resource one allocated right so we've got five plus two plus one so we've got eight of resource one allocated there's nine total that must mean that there's one available so you can figure out the available from the current allocations and from the total resources and again, we, we've got two allocated for resource two. There's three total, so that leaves one. We've got four um, allocated. Um, there's six, so it leaves two available. Right? Likewise, you can derive, we, we call this the need matrix C minus A in our assignment. This is, you know, if, if I claim that I need, need three of resource one, like process one does here, and I've currently got allocated one of those, that means that I need still two more potentially to finish my work. So that's why this is the need matrix here. So anyway, um, back to the, um, the problem set, and I'm not gonna say a lot about this unless the people here that are uh, 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 live, um, on the Zoom session, ask something about the problem set, but but the problem set is doing the banker's algorithm by hand, right? So um, the, the first thing is that uh, you're given the that that the, the the total resources. So this is the R vector from our textbook is um, fifteen six nine um, and ten. Um, and, and you're kind of given what the available is. So, so you're first asked, okay, verify. So, so and, and again, you know, this is written work. So, you know, you have to verify by showing me the calculation. So, so somehow, you know, prove to me or, or support or, 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 um, or, or support either that, that this available is correct um, or that it's not correct, right? So, um, yeah, as a hint, I mean, yeah, it, it, it is calculated correctly, so you should be supporting that, that the available is correct given the allocation. Um, so this is your allocation, this is your claim matrix. Uh, so I probably should just call this claim instead of max, my maximum um, demand. But, but yeah, the, these correspond to um, uh, the, the claim and the allocations uh, here. So. Uh, and then the second is you have to calculate the need matrix. So, that, so I, I just got done talking about that. So the need is, you know, you can calculate the need from the, um, the, the claim matrix, the maximum claim that you make you have and, and what the current allocation is. So those are kind of warm ups. Uh, and then you need to actually do the banker's algorithm. So first, given the state of the system, you have to show either if the state is safe or not. Um, so by, by doing the is safe um, uh, or, or doing the algorithm given 
um, or the safe states. And again, that's that's this here, right? Uh, um, and then, though, you know, again, make certain you do this correctly when you're doing the problem set. So, if we give an additional request, so I have, I, I mean, I give this problem or similar problem to this. Uh, so when I say that there's a request for 3233, that's in addition to what process five currently has. So, so process five currently has one each. Um, so I'm not saying that, that the new state is where process five is allocated another two, 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 two. So, so, so that, that would be a different request. So, so if I request 2222, then it's then process five's current allocation would then be 3233, but that's not what I'm asking. What, what we're actually asking here is that um, the request is for a, an additional 3233. So that means that process five's current allocation should change from this to 4244, right? So given his current allocation would be 4244, that would change what, um, that wouldn't change its maximum demand, um, but that would change the available and so on. But, but given that, you know, so it's again, but, but for both of these, you're just, um, you're just um, given a, a, a state of a system, you have to determine whether it's safe or not, whether that state is safe or not, right? So for the first one, you have to determine the given state. For the second one, you have to correctly um, figure out a new state. Um, you know, so, so given that, that we have a request by process five for these additional amount of resources, that implies a new state. And then from that, you have to determine if that new state is safe or not. All right. So yeah, so um, I wanna talk about the um, assignment, um, but uh, unless somebody wants to ask a question about the, the written problem set here. Um, okay, um, so let's look at the assignment. Um, so we are gonna be implementing um, the banker's algorithm or, or the resource allocation denial algorithm um, in code for assignment three. Um, so really, um, I, I think people might find this assignment a little bit easier than the previous one, so we'll see. Um, but, but really, basically you have to implement the is safe state. Um, yeah, there are some lecture videos uh, where I actually walk through kind of what you have to do for the written problem set. So um, the, the one of the lecture videos is, is about, you know, doing um, both the um, deadlock detection by hand and doing the, the deadlock avoidance, which is the, you know, the banker's algorithm by hand. So, so yeah, you might want to watch those before doing the problem set and, and doing the assignment. Um, so yeah, I mean, anyway, that for the assignment, we're working up to implementing a version of, of the SAFE algorithm. Uh, again, that is the algorithm here. So, so we're going to be implementing this algorithm, right? But to implement this algorithm, before we, I call it is SAFE instead of just SAFE, right? But, but like, uh, like is shown in our textbook, you know, the, the, the is SAFE takes the current state of the system and it returns a Boolean result, true or false. You know, so tr true, it's safe, uh, the, the, the current state of, of the system is safe or false, it's not safe. So, so, so you, know, you, you know, given the state of the system, the claim, the allocation, the, the available resources um, and the total resources, we need to determine whether that state is safe or not. Um, but, In order to implement the is safe function, uh, we first implement three functions that we're going to use for is safe. So, so if you implement the needs are met, the find candidate process, and the release allocated resources, you should be reusing those. So it's a requirement to be reusing those um, in your is safe function. I mean, it should make is safe um, relatively straightforward. 
um, if you reuse those functions, right? So you should be able to directly you to directly implement um, this algorithm that's showing in, shown in our textbook here. Um, all right, so any questions so far or more questions? Um, as usual, you know, so um, actually I already had the assignment open. Let me go ahead and close it. Um, so as usual, you should start by doing a um, um, file, um, open a folder. Um, and open up the uh, assignment three if you want to work on assignment three. So that's on sync assignment um, three and just open up that folder um, and, and check and make certain that everything uh, builds and compiles and test runs as usual. So um, I'm going to open up the test, but um, control shift one control or control exclamation mark should do a clean Control shift two should do a make all or a make. Um, and then control shift three should compile um, and run the, or control shift three should run the test, um, um, although they'll be failing. And, and you should be able to scroll back up and see the, the, the start of these. I, I think I mentioned these last time, so it was a potential issue. So you might want to check. Um, um, I guess most people probably had to get past this issue on the previous assignment, but but you might want to check, make certain that your scroll back buffer um, is set sufficiently large enough so that you can scroll back up to the top of your tests and see these when you run your tests. So once again, that's um, if you open up your settings uh, and search for like a buffer, I think we'll find it for you. Yeah, or scroll back maybe. Um, and check 1,000 might not be sufficient for some of our assignments. So 10,000 is probably enough. But again, you should um, um, uh, you should learn to recognize. Um, so you know, if I run this, you should learn to recognize that uh, if I scroll back up, you should see that that it's running the test by calling dot slash test. You know, so this is the same as if you ran it from the. Uh, the terminal. You can run these. I don't know if I've shown these before, but you, once you have everything compiled, you can run the test the same way by hand by doing dot slash test, right? Um, but but yeah, it's just just running uh, the, the tests here. Right. Uh, but but yeah, this is our first test that's failing. Then um, going up here. Um, all right, anyway, let me talk a little bit about the stuff that you're given. Okay, so basically you're given um, a class again this time called state, uh, which has a header file. Um, and then so, so it's divided into a HPP file, which has the basically the declaration of this class. And then all the implementation of the, 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 the class member functions is in the state.cpp implementation file. Um, if you look down here at the, um, or I guess up here at the private member variables, so the, the, the private member variables is a little bit more complex than um, maybe our previous two assignments. So, so this defines the, um, the state. Um, for the banker's algorithm that we're talking about. So, um, um, so somebody's asking a question, um, probably for the video later on. I don't know if you can see that the chats or not, um, but um, so the make submit, um, yeah, you might still be having that error. So you might have to remind me again what that error was. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, as usual, if you do a make submit, um, you should, um, um, I mean, it should actually make it for you. Uh, you shouldn't get an error like I just got there. Um,
Uh, there we go. I, I, I must have mistyped that. So, um, I just mistyped that. Sorry, I confused myself. So yeah, if, if, if you do make it, it should look something like this. You shouldn't get like any kind of error message or something. So the, the important thing is that um, uh, it's running the, the class code formatter um, on all your code before you submit it. So I don't have to look at, so, so I'm certain that, I'm, that, that it's been formatted according to the class standards. And then it should be creating this, this file called assignment3.tar.gz. So, um, oh yeah, right. So, um, um, if you got, if you get an error message about, um, 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 some kind of, I can't remember exactly, but, but um, um, uh, something where it couldn't run. Um, you might have to, by hand, um, remove, so, so I think the, so again, confirm for me uh, if this is correct or not. So, so you might have to remove um, your dot .plang format. So you might have to open up a terminal and just remove that. So yeah, here, if, if you do an ls-alh, uh, you might see that it's a link. But I think these links aren't working for people on Windows, basically. Uh, if your if your host machine um, is a Windows machine, so you might have to remove that um, and then copy it by hand. So, so if you copy dot dot slash um, If you copy the uh, dot, dot slash dot dot, so that goes up two directories. So from our assignment three directory, if you go up two directories, that puts us back to sync. And in the sync directory, there's a directory called um, config, which has common config for all these assignments. And there, there's a file called clang format without the dot in front of it. Um, so for the clang code formatter, you have to put uh, a dot in front of it. So I copy that to a file called dot clang format. Um, so now when I do that, um, so now it's not a, um, it's not one of these symbolic links anymore, which apparently causes pro people problems. Um, so I kind of fixed, I, I fixed that, but yeah, for anybody that, that created their dev box before I fixed that, you might have to do this every time. So get rid of that so, or copy that by hand. So, um, and again, if, you're, if you have a problem with that, again, let me know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what you should see um, is, is um, if you do your make submit, it should do that without like an error message. And you should end up with the assignment3.tar.gz file um, for you that you can upload. And, um, all right. Yeah. So thanks for reminding me about that. But but hopefully that that was what you have to do. Or you can go back and read the uh, the announcement about that. I think I put those commands that, that you might have to do for them in an announcement in class as well. So. Um, all right. So let, let's let's um, I thought I would, you know, kind of tell you a few things about how this this works here. So we're we're again using object-oriented programming. So we define our state class. Basically all these things are things to hold the current state of the system. So you can run, you know, uh, so you can determine if that state is safe or not. Right. So um, um, again we've got um, um, like like figure 6.9a, basically we're just using plain C arrays in this case. So I kind of did go back. Uh, so I'm not using STL fancy containers because um, it's, it's the, the reason why in case you're interested is it's kind of it's kind of tough. There, there's no real good standard template library container for doing multi-dimensional arrays. So so I went back to um, just using regular arrays instead of like a list or a vector here, just just so that we could more easily use um, um, 
two-dimensional arrays for the allocation of the claim. We need two-dimensional arrays so that we could represent tables, right? But we're going to represent tables in the same way, rows for processes and columns, um, or, or in this case, the, the first index indexes the row for the two-dimensional array. If, if, you, if it's been a while since you did coding with like a, a multi-dimensional array. So, so the first index tells you the, the row and the second index uh, tells you the column. Um, although an, another difference is, so our textbook uses starts indexing at one, so one, two, three, but, but we're gonna index starting at zero. So we're gonna refer to, the, to the, our things as process zero, process one, process two, process three, if we have four, four processes. And we're gonna re refer to these as resource zero, resource one, resource two, if you have three processes, okay? Um, but um, anyway, back to um, our state here. Um, we have a two-dimensional claim matrix in our state class. Uh, with processes for the first index, um, so you can think of that as the rows and, and resources for the second index. Um, and allocation is also two dimensional. Um, and then need, uh, again, um, um, uh, let me open up one of the, the sim simulation files here. So uh, state one sim. So notice in the simulation file, um, the first line of a simulation, so the, all, all that's in one of these files is just the, uh, the claim and the allocation and the total resources, okay? Uh, and then this first line tells us the number of, um, um, so, so the first number is the number of processes, and the second number is the number of resources. Um, and by the way, the, 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 the first state one sim is, um, is, um, this state here that was given for figure 6.7, right? So, so, so this one should correspond to the system that was discussed, um, the state of the system that was discussed in our textbook. Right? So, except in our case, we're going to be calling this, you know, process zero has a claim for 322. Um, instead of process one had a claim for 322 and so on, right? So we just re renumber those to start indexing at zero. Um, but um, anyway, so, so given the claim and the allocation, um, uh, we can calculate the need, which you have to do by hand for the first, um, for the problem set, right? But, but, you know, just the difference between claim and allocation gives us the need. Uh, you're also given the total resources that's read in from the file. So, so again, for this first problem, we had nine of resource zero. We're going to call it resource zero, resource one, and resource two. Um, and three of resource one and six of resource two. But from that, you can you can figure out the resource available. So, so again, from the um, the current allocation of six two one or one six two. Um, that tells us that there's currently nine allocated um, and we had a total of nine. So that's going to indicate that there's zero of resource, uh, zero available in this case. Right? Yeah, and, and the resource available and resource total just has to be a vector, just a one dimensional array because, um, because, because yeah, there, there's just one piece of information for each resource, right? For resource zero, resource one, and resource two total resources and current available resources. Right? Um, all of these arrays are actually out, allocated um, statically. Okay, again, to simplify this. So basically what happens if you look at the constructor, um, maybe I can go ahead and, and open up the, oh yeah, I've got state CPP. So if you look at the um, uh, constructor uh, here, um, Or actually, um, I mean, if you look at the declaration, so we, we declare the claim, we, we don't do any dynamic memory allocation. We just declare a claim matrix to hold max processes and max resources, for example, right? Where max processes and resources are defined up here as constants. Um, so maximum 20. 
So, so we do that. So what happens is, is a two-dimensional array is allocated that's big enough to hold 20 rows and 20 columns. But when we read in um, a file, um, uh, we might only be using part of that statically allocated claim matrix, right? So, so yeah, I mean, again, if we read in this uh, state in order to simulate the banker's algorithm, we're only going to be using the, the, the first four rows and the first three columns in the claim matrix, right? We, we got four. And, and this tells us the number of rows and the number of columns or the number of items that are valid um, in our vectors here, um, since we have three resources, right? Um, and um, I give you the, the, the function to load the state from the file, so you don't have to, you don't have to, to write that, although you might want to look at that because um, a lot of the stuff that the load state does um, should give you ideas, or, or you'll be doing similar things for the four methods that you have to implement um, for the assignment, right? Um, so basically what load state does, um, you know, it, it first reads in the first line in order to find out um, the number of processes. So, so besides these matrices, we have two just regular uh, scalar values. And so regular values just hold a single piece of information. So, so the number of processes and the number of resources, right? So, so we, uh, the, 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 the load state function expects the file to be exactly in this format, right? So it doesn't do a lot of error checking. So it expects the first line that's not a blank line or a line with a, a pound in front of it. So these are comments here. So it expects the first line with some information in it to have, have the number of processes and the number of resources. Um, um, and it, it reads those in. And then it expects the, um, the, the total resources to all be on one line. Um, so there's a loop here that, that loops uh, from zero up to number of resources and reads those in. So, so the, the basically this first resource here, uh, nine, um, gets read in um, from the sim file and gets put into the resource total at index zero, right? For resource zero, right? And then the next one, um, three um, in this loop will get read into resource total for resource one and so on, right? And for the, the, um, for the claim and the allocation matrix, uh, we have to have a, a nested loop. Um, so we iterate over the processes because we iterate over the rows. So initially, we're going to process the first row. So for process zero, um, um, you know, it's claiming they need three of resource zero, two of resource one, and, and two of resource two. All right. So again, though, it'll, it'll read those in, and those will end up um, in our claim matrix because we expect the claim matrix to come next after the total resources, uh, and then the allocation matrix after that. Right. So, so you'll need to do similar things though when you process. Um, like the resource total vector or the, um, the, the, the resource available vector or the claim matrix or the allocation matrix. Um, um, and those, this, this method only reads in um, the information given from the file. And then we call the infer state information, uh, which infers the, uh, the need matrix by, uh, again, by using a nested loop but subtracting C minus A. So, so each claim minus each allocation should tell us the need, right? Um, and um, likewise, we can also infer the um, resource available, although um, Um, here, basically, remember, so, so to figure out the current allocation, we have to add up all the values um, in, a, in a column, basically. 
right? So for um, uh, for each resource, we have to go through each process and add up the allocations currently allocated for each process. And once we know that, we can subtract that current allocation from the total to find out the available for each of the resources. Okay, anyway, so, so I kind of want to wrap up um, and talk a little bit about the process here for the last, or the, 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 the function, member function you have to add, but, but that's the basics of what you're given. Um, so you're going to basically have to implement then the uh, needs are met, find candidate process, release allocation resources, and then once you have those, you have to reuse those for the is safe um, method here. Um, all right, questions so far? Um, okay, so as usual, you should do these in order. Um, um, uh, I mean, for one, the is safe reuses all three of these. Uh, but these others reuse. So yeah, I think uh, find candidate process, you should be reusing needs are met. Um, okay, so, so, so needs are met, I'll just describe these one by one and give a chance, um, you know, so it'd be good for these help sessions, I should probably try to get to this point quicker. It'd be good, right, for people to actually um, be starting to try to implement these if you haven't started already or, or to come having started um, on the assignment. Um, so you have questions on, on particular tasks uh, here. So the needs are met, basically ask the question. Um, so if, if you give it a process uh, ID, okay, so we index processes by like a process ID. So process zero, process one, process two. Um, so, so if, if, if we give a process ID and an array of integers that represent the current number of resources available of each resource type, okay? So remember, um, that there is actually um, uh, a resource available, but uh, if you look at the implementation of the banker's algorithm, uh, what we do is we, we try and find a process whose, need, whose needs can be met by the current available resources. And if we find such a process, we, we, the, the way I think about it is we simulate it as going ahead and granting all the resources that it says it's, it needs so that it can complete. So, so, so we just let that, that process get all the resources if its needs can be met from the current available. Um, and once it's completed, then it could return its resources back. Okay, so 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 the the um, returning its its back would actually increase the number of, of resources available. And then once we do that, maybe another process can now have its needs met that couldn't have its needs met before. Okay, so I'm, I'm describing some of the basic steps of this banker's algorithm. Okay? And so anyway, for the the needs are met. Uh, we don't use the, um, the the resources available. This part of the class we pass in a current available because as as, as a part of running the is safe method to, to determine if the state is safe or not, if the current state is safe or not, we we might be returning resources back by this process of simulating processes running to completion and returning their resources. So, so uh, the current available should start equal to the, 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 the available resources, but um, it might increase, okay? So anyway, back, back to the needs are met. Given a, a process and, and the current available, we wanna return true um, if that process's needs could be met by the available resources that we show in this vector. So this vector is, is the same as the resource available, but um, um, in format, it's just the number of resources available for each of the resources um, in our system that we're looking to. Um, and we should return false if for that process, we can't um, meet its resources. 
Well, again, as usual, um, um, I encourage you to also look at the tests in order to understand these better. Uh, the, the, the first test case, uh, you don't have to worry about because this is a, um, a test of the loading, some of the general stuff that I gave you. So, so, so yeah, I mean, you'll be starting kind of with the second test case. Uh, these should all be passing. So again, if we run um, our tests here, you should find that the first failing one is at line 86, um, which is down here in the, uh, in the actual second test case here. Right? Um, all right, so if we load um, state one, which is this system here, and if current available is zero one one, we can ask, okay, so so um, check, can we can we check for process zero if its needs are met or not? And that should return false if you've implemented the needs are met correctly, um, as is indicated by this test. Okay, so let's let's check that out. What that means, right? So process zero claims. Um, so, so we currently have 0, 1, 1 available. Um, and um, um, process 0, which is what we're checking here for the first test, claims that it needs 3, 2, 2, right? Um, Um, oh, yeah, in order to completely do this, though, you have to actually, that's the total claim, but you have to look at what it currently needs. So, so, um, so it would be helpful if we knew what the need matrix was here. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of calculate that for process zero, right? So, so again, I mean, you can infer this. So, so you know, so given that, that process zero claims it needs 322, but it currently has 100, it still needs 222, right? So just subtracting those two. Um, but we've got only, we've got zero, for example, of, of resource um, zero available, right? So there's not enough of resource, there's not enough of any resource, but, but the algorithm, you know, the, the first one that you find, so what you have to do is you have to look through each of the available resources and compare that with the need. And if you find any need that's greater than the available, then the answer is false but only if all of the needs can be met by the current available um, would you return a true answer. So in this case, we should be returning false, right? Uh, but for process uh, one, um, it claims it needs 613 and it currently has allocated 612, right? So that means it needs 001, right? So it needs, Got all the six that it needs. It's got all, or sorry, all of the resource zero that it needs. It's got all the resource one that it claims it needs at most. Um, but it's only got two of the three potentially of resource um, two that it needs to complete its work. Right. So it's needed zero zero one one. So so you know again looking at the current available, you know we're fine for resource zero. We're fine for resource one. Um, and we're fine for resource two as well. It claims at most it needs it needs one more of resource one. We've got one of, of resource one, of resource two, sorry, zero, one, two here. So um, its needs can be met. That, that's why it should be returning um, true uh, in this case. Right? Um, and then the other two, if you, if you go through that, should be returning false, right? So anyway, I just described what you need to do for the needs are met. You know, you need to be looking at the need matrix. Um, so that's that's this matrix here, um, and you need to be looking at the, the need matrix for the particular process. You know, so so you're given the particular process ID, and you're given the uh, a vector of what's currently available. So so again, you shouldn't be looking at the um, oops at the um, at the, the resources available um, initially for the state when you started um, trying to determine if the state was safe or not. You need to be looking at um, the, um, you need to be looking at what you're told is the current available that's passed in 
so the needs are met um, as, as the second parameter here. So. All right, so yeah, um, so I should, should move on here so I can talk about the other three functions. So, any questions about that? Um, all right. Oh, I noticed uh, a student had a student join, but uh, I'm still with my previous class just, just to let that student know. So we'll be starting the, uh, the, the, the data structures class here um, in a few minutes. So, all right. I didn't want to confuse you. So, um, all right. Um, so that was the needs are met. So the next task. Um, is to find a candidate process. So, so for um, so I already, I already described this, but um, one of the steps for the is safe method is um, among the, the 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 processes that haven't been completed yet, um, and given what the current available resources are, uh, we we want to ask the question. Okay. Um, what is there any process whose needs can be met? Um, and then if there is, uh, tell me what one of those processes are. Okay, so that's what the find candidate process is. And it should be reusing the needs are met function that you implement for task one here, right? So, um, um, so you have to have uh, you have to have two pieces of information. Again, if you go back and read our textbook about the um, um, the is safe method, the, the safe method for the banker's algorithm, um, you keep track of which processes have run yet or not. So, like for example, initially um, all processes um, haven't completed yet. So you might so so we will be using like an array of booleans. Um, and, and in this case, you know, for our state one. Um, we've got four processes, so we have to have four states, and, and, and all processes, uh, it's false that they've completed, right? So, so anyway, if, if you ask um, the find candidate process, um, and, and if you say no process is completed yet, and this is what the, the current available is, 011, you should know from what we just did here, because that was the same thing, but assuming that all the processes, none of them are completed yet, only one process had its needs met, which were process one uh, among these, right? Um, so that's what should be returning for, for the candidate process um, um, here, right? Um, so again, the way that you implement find candidate process is you have to have a loop that's looking through all the processes, but you only wanna check the processes um, that are not completed, so who, who's completed um, is um, false. Um, and then for, for any process who's completed is false, you want to use the needs are met to see if, if its needs can be met from the current available. Um, and then the first steps process that you find that's not completed and whose needs can be met, you return that, right? But at the end here, um, um, so, so yeah, after doing that, for example, if, if, um, if process one was completed, now if we ask to find a candidate process, um, um, it's not true that the needs could be met for process zero or two or three, right? So in, in that case, um, if you check all the candidate processes um, that haven't completed yet, but none of their needs can be met, you should be returning the no candidate, right? So you kind of failed to find a process whose needs can be met here. Um, okay, quick questions on that. Find candidate process. Um, and then the release allocated resource, this is the step in the, the, the safe state determination. Um, yeah, uh, so the question was, I mean, because it should, it should return the first one that it finds. I mean, in, in, in order to pass the test, we expect that, that, that the first valid process um, that's not completed, um, that's needs to be met would be the one that's returned as the candidate process. So, so yeah, it should just return the first one it finds. 
there, there is a potential, yeah, there is a potential that, that multiple processes could be candidates, but you should always be processing the first candidate, you know, in order of the process ID number. Um, okay, so the release allocated resources then, um, so again, you know, this is part of implementing the is safe. Um, you know, to check whether a state is safe or not. So if you find a candidate process, we need to simulate running it to completion and then releasing its allocated resources back to the current available so that we could then check and see if more processes can now be run or not. Um, right. So um, basically for the find candidate process, you, you give it, um, or sorry, for, for the release allocated resources, you give it the process ID and you give it the current available. And what you should do, uh, all, all you need to do for this is, is um, update the current available to, to return back the resources that this process, um, uh, like process one in this case, currently has allocated, all right? So, so not, not the resources that it, um, uh, claims as its maximum, but but the, the resources, its current allocation is what should be returned back um, to the available. All right, so that's, that's a common, oops, sorry, that's a common mistake, returning the wrong, wrong thing. So, so you want to return back it's, it, what it currently has allocated. So, you know, again, that, that's what's being tested here. So after you return back um, the resources for process one, um, um, if you go back and check that, you would see uh, that current available should be 623 after returning back the resources that um, process one has allocated here. So 612, um, right? Because, because it was 011, we returned 612 back. So after re returning those, releasing those allocated res resources, we now have 623 available. All right, and then I do need to wrap up. Um, so, so those were all of the, the things you need to reuse all those for the is safe, right? So, so the general um, algorithm for is safe um, to connect these, um, you need to initialize um, a current available. So the, the current available should start out being the same as the, um, 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 the 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 uh, resource available that we have on the system. So basically, you have to copy these resources from here to another array called current available, so you can dynamically be updating those, right? Um, and then this rest here is is what we were calling the um, the, the the finished uh, in those tests. Um, or completed uh, in those tests here. Um, that just marked whether the process is uh, finished or not. Uh, I can't draw a little bit of a blank. I can't remember why rest. Um, so here they're, they're kind of implying that this is like a list of like integers, so process IDs, and then they remove that. So, so we're we're doing it slightly differently. We have a, 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 a like a an array of booleans, true or false, and then we mark it as true if it's finished. So here, this is the rest of, of the processes that aren't finished yet. Okay, and then then you have to implement a loop um, where you're doing those things: find a process um, whose needs can be met, um, and if you find one, to, to release its its resources uh, and keep doing that uh, until you don't find a candidate process. And then your final answer is that if everything has been completed for us, if all the processes are completed, then the state is safe. Um, and if one or more processes did not complete, then it's unsafe, all right? Okay, so yeah, I need to go ahead and stop um, my session here for the um, operating systems class. Anybody have a quick question for that before I transition over to the data structures class?
All right. Um, so, oh, and yeah, kind of as a note, I am going to have to end the meeting uh, and then restart it immediately for my data structures uh, 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 students here. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to rejoin, but I do need to end this so I can get the video recording correct. Okay. But uh, but that's it for this this um, help session. Um, and as usual, send me emails um, if you have them. Um, or um, and yeah, I'll see you um, later then.